If you're looking to buy your first e-reader device, you're probably looking at the Kindle baseline for $89. However, this e-reader is missing a ton of functionality and that cheap price will definitely come to bite you if you aren't aware of what you're missing out on. In this video, we're doing a deep dive review of the basic Kindle over here, talking about all the things it does have, as well as all the things that it's missing. Hi there, Rai Giri Jika Khalsa, Rai Giri Jiki Fateh. My name is Manith Paul Singh. On this show, we talk about the power of reading books and find ways to read more effectively. Now, if you're buying a Kindle, regardless which one you get, you're gonna get something that's really helpful for reading. All of them have the same functionality. You can highlight books, you can store thousands of books on the Kindle. All the basic stuff that you would want from an e-reader will be there. However, on the Kindle Basic model, you are missing out on a lot of small things that make reading more of a pleasant experience. Let me talk about some of those. Now, the first thing I wanna talk about is the buying experience. You do have the option of buying it in black black or white, both models start at $89 and they both come at eight gigabytes, which is more than enough to store thousands of books. And surprisingly, this baseline Kindle also has built-in Bluetooth, so you can connect your headphones and listen to audiobooks if you really wanted to. Now you won't be able to store many audiobooks, eight gigabytes will only get you only a dozen or so audiobooks on your device, but it's still a great feature to have for the very baseline model. Now the main reason why this device is so cheap compared to the paper white or the Oasis is because of the lower resolution display. They chose to use a 167 PPI display on this model. All the other Kindle models, like the Paperwhite and the Oasis, have a 300 PPI display. That means pixels per inch. The resolution is just a lot less, half of that of the other models. Now it does still have a six inch display. And I gotta say, when I first turned this thing on, I really did not notice much of a difference in resolution. You will see a difference we're looking at images and things like that. But once you read the text after a minute or two, you really don't look at the blurriness or the low resolution anymore. It works just fine. But again, if you're reading a book every single day and you read a lot, it's not really worth buying a device that's gonna have some blurriness and low res screen. You might as well pay the extra money for a device that will have a much sharper screen and it's for reading. You wanna have a resolution that's really comfortable to read. And on top of the lower resolution, they also chose to put less LEDs for brightness control. This only has four LEDs in terms of brightness adjustment. And that is something I noticed. When adjusting the brightness on this thing, you could only adjust it so much. It's nothing compared to the Paperwhite and definitely nothing compared to the Oasis. And also on this baseline model, there's no temperature control for the brightness either. So you only have that one color of blue light emitting from the device. It's nothing like the Oasis or the other Kobos that I reviewed where they have warm light to control when you're reading at night. With all that being said though, if you're looking for a very, very basic bare bones Kindle, this device is still really good because the display may not be as nice as the other models, but the functionality in terms of software and everything you would expect is still there. Another way they save money is by using different materials for actually building the device. You'll notice that this is a complete plastic design. The back of it's all plastic. The front of it is all plastic. The display actually is not even a flush design. There's a bit of an indent where the screen goes down into the device. It's not really the best quality, but I have to say I really do like how it's plastic in the front. Compared to my Oasis and my Paperwhite, those devices have a glossy front. This is just a plastic front, so the fingerprints are not nearly as bad as the glossy front of the Paperwhite in the Oasis. But don't get me wrong, this Kindle definitely still gets fingerprints all over the place. It's not nearly as bad, but they still show up on the back and the front. Now, if you watch my other videos, this next section will be your favorite part of the video. The power button on this device is again on the bottom of the device. I don't know why they put power buttons on the bottom, but I will say the power button is a nice button. It clicks really nice. It's easy to press. There's no issue pressing the button itself. The location of it though is just in a weird place right at the bottom next to the micro USB charger, which is my other complaint of this device. Obviously it's the baseline model, so I can't complain too much, but a micro USB charger is definitely outdated in 2021. One thing to note that I will say I appreciate is the USB cable that came with the baseline Kindle is the same cable as comes with the Oasis or the Paperwhite. That cannot be said with the Kobo. The baseline Kobo comes with a cheaper cable and they use cheaper materials for that. 
I applaud Amazon for having consistent cables across all their devices. Now in terms of hardware, that's basically it. There's no page turn buttons. There's nothing really else on this device besides that USB charger and the power button. There's no sensors for any rotation or light sensing or anything like that. It's all manual. It also has a 512 megabyte of RAM as well as a one gigahertz processor. But I have to say this device just feels extremely slow when using it. It has the same hardware specs as the Paperwhite and that device also feels really slow. I think it's just Amazon's operating system. It's not really optimized for this low spec hardware. My Kindle Oasis, that OS is obviously gonna feel a lot nicer because they put a dual core processor in that. But on this device, it's the baseline model. This and the Paperwhite just feel extremely sluggish. And when using this device, because of the low res screen, it just feels even slower because things just look a little blurry. Things don't look like they're loading all the way. It just feels like an old device. One thing that I found really frustrating is when highlighting text on the device, it would take a few seconds for that little menu to pop up after you drag your finger on the text. It was really frustrating because you can't finish highlighting until that comes up and you press the highlight button. These are just small things that I'm noticing and I'm sure after using this for a few more weeks, I would just be sick of it because of the slowness. And one other thing that I should know is this device is not waterproof. Unlike the other Kindles, you cannot submerge this device underwater. I'm not sure who actually does that, but just something thing you should know. At the end of the day, this is a baseline Kindle. You get what you pay for. If you are on a very extreme budget, there's nothing wrong with getting this device. You can still do all the advanced things you can do on the Kindle Oasis, which costs so much more money than this device does. But if you do read a lot, I would strongly encourage you to at least upgrade to the Kindle Paperwhite so you get a better resolution screen and just a better design factor from that. I have to say this is not a bad device, but I don't think it's the best device for reading every single day. Now, if you enjoyed watching this video, I also want to encourage you to watch my Kindle Paperwhite video. I actually titled that video, Do Not Buy the Kindle Paperwhite. I had a few complaints about that, but that device is better than this device. Check that review video out so you are fully educated on which device to get. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.